idcwoodcraft.com. Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and welcome to the short little video I've made for you to answer a question I've been getting from a lot of people regarding the Beast CNC router bit that's available at IDC Woodcraft. I've been demonstrating this bit on an industrial level machine. Right over there, my Phantom CNC router, which is a machine I definitely recommend if you wanna really kind of dive into the CNC world. But I've been running this at a thousand inches per minute, one inch deep, 80% step over on maple, a relatively hard wood, and it doesn't even know it's there. But there are other machines out there, like the Long Mill Benchtop Unit, or Onefinity, and Millwright, and some of the other brands. And so, how do you, how does this bit perform on these type of machines? So I'm going to demonstrate here what you can do with your benchtop machine, the, the limits that you can take it to when you have uh, uh, like a Makita trim router, uh, you have a machine that's not built with the rigidity of an industrial floor model, there are limitations and the main limitation is the power of the router. But I'm going to demonstrate this and I'll tell you the settings. We're going to cut pockets in this piece of maple here and you will be able to see what you can get away with and then I'll talk to you after the little demonstration. Now the reason you see these little strips in here is because we are actually overworking the physical limits of the machine. In other words, the entire machine is flexing. So what I mean is we are literally torquing the entire assembly of the machine. And this is something that's quite typical with benchtop machines. You only have so much power that you can apply to them. And as you've seen, we have really hit the limit of the Makita. And this is kind of typical when you're pushing a benchtop CNC router this hard. Not just the long mill, but most CNC routers are going to do this when they're a benchtop unit. They're not built for a lot of robust work like an industrial unit is. But you can see, we actually cut three quarters of an inch deep on this. One shot. So you know the router bit can handle it. Now we're gonna run it as an offset. Rather than raster, we're gonna come back and we're gonna start in the middle and it's gonna work its way out. And typically when you're doing a roughing cut, that's the better way of doing it instead of a raster when you're roughing things out. It just works better on the machine. It's always in a conventional or a climb cut. So I'll show you what I mean. Now we're running this at five on the trim router. Now all this noise you're hearing right now is because of two things. We are overworking the physical limits of the machine and the power capacity of the Makita router. So this is just a demonstration. At the end of this video, I'll tell you the settings that you want to use for your benchtop CNC machine, no matter what it is, mill right, long mill, infinity, all of them have their limits when it comes to uh, just the benchtop CNC machines and using a bit like this.
The reason we had that dig there is because I had my Z set at the improperly. It was uh, already set like a quarter inch deep because the original one here was supposed to be uh, half an inch, but we are at three quarters of an inch or just shy of that. So we're cutting pretty deep. You could tell it was bogging down the router. We have reached the limit of what this router can do. This was done in one minute and 20 seconds. All right, so we've run these two pockets here. This was a raster cut and you saw that it left little pieces there. And that's because I was pushing very hard, actually starting to push the physical limits of the machine itself. And then I did the, the, um, the, offset cut there and you can see I actually cut into a nail <laughs> the beast just kept on going so the whole intention behind this is just to rough that material out really fast not leave a clean cut and then you'll just come in behind with your regular CNC bits your down cut or your up cut so the settings I ran this thing at was 100 inches per minute initially I was meaning to go half an inch deep but I had my Z setting wrong, so we went three quarters of an inch deep, and you saw that I was working this router, uh, kind of getting to its limits, but it did perform. This router bit did perform at three quarters of an inch. So the settings that you want to work with, with this is no more, on your bench tops, is no more than three quarters of an inch deep. I would recommend half of an inch deep with maybe an 85 to 90 per, uh, inches per minute. I would go with an 80% step over. That's what this is designed to do. And if you feel like the machine that you have is starting still bogging down, then you may want to bring those numbers down a little bit more. The good thing with this is this it's a super robust bit. You can't break it, <laughs> especially with a machine like this. So I hope that this video, this little short video, demo, demo video is helpful for you, but you can see how quickly, just I want to reiterate, a minute and a half and it cleaned these out. When you do that with your standard up bits, down bits, you're working with 40% step over, 60 inches per minute, and it takes two, three, four, five times longer. And that's the intention of this, is to make those jobs go a lot faster and to spare those other bits because this is your workhorse, right? This is the one that's doing all the heavy lifting to get all that material out of there. And this can handle it much better than your other bits and it'll spare the life of your regular up cut down cut compression bits and what have you so i hope this video was helpful in understanding what the beast can do with a bench top machine and the limitations that you have also that it can really perform and and get uh get your jobs done a lot faster it can turn a 25 minute pocketing job into an eight minute pocketing job. That's what this thing is designed to do. IDCWoodcraft.com